I created the bot that plays random dice and it actually outperformed me. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the approach I took to building bot, the challenges I faced, and show off what the bot actually managed to achieve. So I actually ran this bot for over 12 hours to monitor its performance, and I made a bot tell you what it's actually thinking about and trying to achieve at any given time. We'll come back to that in a minute, but first of all, let's cover off what you actually do in random dice and how it all actually works. So random dice is a simple tower defense game. You build a deck by selecting 5 dice, and then you either play co-op mode with one or other player, or you can play player versus player mode, which is against the other player. You press the buy button to buy a dice, it starts out costing you $10 doodles, and then goes up by 10 every time you buy a dice. So something like 10, 20, 30, 40, and then $50 doodles, and then I think you get the point. So, when you get two of the same kind of dice, you can merge those two together, and you'll get a random dice that's one level higher. You only merge dice if they're actually at the same level. Now, the only other action you can do is upgrading each dice type. So this will basically affect all of the dice you have on the board of that type. We started at level 1 and they can be upgraded all the way up to level 5. They more or less double the cost each time you go up each upgrade level. So you can get more powerful base dice by either paying money or playing the game for super long periods of time. And well, I'm a YouTuber so I have no money and I have unlimited time. That leaves us with the option of playing the game like a normal person. Now I had a thought and it's obviously the title of the video. Now I could grind for hours and hours, or I could spend hours building a bot that will play for me. And I can click the sweet, sweet rewards at the end. So our first choice is which game mode do we try to make a bot for? Co-op mode or PvP? So PvP mode, there is only a single winner, and you lose progress each time you lose. Now, co-op mode on the other hand, if you lose even on the first wave, you will get a reward. I mean, it might not be the best reward, but a reward is a reward, right? The only problem is, you have to watch an ad each time you play a co-op match. So that's kind of the trade-off there. And I ultimately decided, we'll try and build a bot that's happy to watch an ad, and then hopefully we'll find a random person online who can actually carry us to sweet, sweet victory. So let's go ahead and talk about how I built the bot, and we can actually see it in action. So this is a mobile game. I figured the easiest way to create a bot would be to simply load the game in an emulator on my PC, and have the bot move my mouse and click. I used the BlueStacks emulator, installed random dice, and we're pretty much good to go. Now the process I had in mind was quite simple. I take a screenshot of BlueStacks, take a look at a certain region of the screen, compare the pixels, and if there's a known match screenshot, then we know exactly where we are. So for example, in the main menu, we can look for the PvP mode text at a fixed offset. The button, it always looks the same, it's always in the same spot, so if we can find those pixels in the exact same spot where we're expecting it to be, we know we're in the main menu. Now, once we've determined we're actually in the main menu, we need to basically decide, is there going to be a pesky add button visible, or can we actually go into co-op mode? So, I took pretty much the same strategy, did a pixel match, if the add button is there, we'll click on it, otherwise we'll try and click the co-op button itself. Again, all the positions are all fixed, so checking the pixels is quite simple. Now, funnily enough, watching the ads was actually the hardest point of this entire bot. The ads go for a maximum of 30 seconds, so I figured I'd just put a 30 second timer, let it go to sleep, and then click on a predefined location on the screen. Boy, was I in for a shot. So most of the ads, um, they actually have a close button in a completely different spot. And worst of all, if you click anywhere on the ad, it actually takes you to the ad in the Play Store, so rest in peace. Now to work around this is a simple cheat. I just went through and collected the locations of all the X buttons I could for a whole bunch of different ads. And then, if the bot didn't know where it was, it would just basically assume it either clicked out of the game, or it needed to click an X for an ad. So the bot would basically try to click each X, wait a second, and then click back into the game just in case, and then repeat with all the remaining ad spots. Each time the bot got stuck on an ad, I just added the new spot into my list of ads. And then eventually I had a bot that could go through and watch all of the ads, and actually get into the game. Again, there's a few more menus to click through here, but it's just a matter of looking for those known set of pixels, click on the text we need to click, and then, you know, clicking on the right spot. Eventually I had a bot that could watch ads and actually get into the game. Again, there's a few more menus to click through, but it's just a matter of looking for a known set of pixels, like the text we need to click, and clicking in the right spot. Awesome, so that basically takes us in-game. Now, let's talk about the random dice strategy. I spent a lot of time thinking about the simplest possible strategy we could implement that would actually work. We need, to figure, we need to somehow figure out which dice to place, when to do upgrades, and figure out which dice we can actually merge. My first strategy was very simple. We simply click on the spawn dice button, and then each of the upgrade buttons. Dead simple. So, it starts out cheaper buying dice, but eventually it will cost more to buy a dice than it does to upgrade. So the bot, 
will more or less slowly buy the upgrades and spawn as many dice as possible. With this simple logic, the bot already did pretty well. But ultimately, it was being held back by not being able to merge. To handle the mergers, I needed to do something a little more complex. We know the location of all the squares. What if we take a screenshot of each square and compare it to the blank square screenshot we've saved? We can know how many blank squares there are and how many have a dice in them. See, now the problem with that approach, uh, there's a bunch of bullets going over the squares and there's anti-aliasing, which actually changes how the dice look square to square. So I decided to compare how close each square was to each of the empty squares we knew about. Basically, we loop over each pixel, compare the red, green, and blue values. If the pixels are close enough, then we'll consider it an empty square. Now we basically need to monitor the board. Once we think the board is completely full, only then we should try and do mergers. In general, you want to try and keep the board full due to how the merging works in random dice. Now there's simply too many possible dice, and I don't really want to have to take a screenshot of each level of dice. So as you level these up, you know, this, the image of these actually changes, like level 1 and level 2 look pretty different. So I decided on a different way to decide when to actually merge the dice. Let's take a screenshot of every single dice, that is the dice on the board, and we'll do a comparison between all the dice on the board with each other, excluding the blanks, and if they're within a certain threshold of similarity, then we'll attempt to merge them. Surprisingly enough, the bot was able to actually give decent merge ideas. It gave a lot of false positives, but really it doesn't really matter. Um, there's no penalty for dragging a dice into something that can't be merged. So now the merge itself is simply move the mouse into the right spot, hold down the left click, and then move the mouse to the location of the dice we want to merge it into. And then of course let go. So we need a tiny bit more glue at the end of the match once the match was over. Basically we'll navigate back to the main menu, and then we'll have a fully functional bot. So look, let's go ahead and watch some of the bot's gameplay. We'll speed it up to make it so it's a bit more interesting, and we'll watch it go through a full entire cycle. Okay, so the match just finished up there, as you can see. Now, it's going to load up back to the main menu. Now, straight away, the bot's going to recognize it's in the main menu and click on that add button. Now, we'll just fast through it, forward through the ad real quick here. And you can see there, the bot actually just clicked on that ad link there. And it's going back in the main menu now. It knows it can find a match. It's going through the menu. And it's going into the matchmaking queue. Awesome. Okay, it's found a match. The match is loading up and we're in game. Let's watch the game.
Okay, so that's most of the gameplay. Now the bot, unfortunately, it is coming to a point where it's probably going to lose. And yep, yeah, it actually lost there. And the cycle pretty much starts over from there. So it's going to go watch more ads. It's going to go play more games. And it's going to play for another 12 hours or so. And it did actually go the entire night looking through those ads and owning a bunch of chests. So guys, if you did actually enjoy this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Make sure you smash that like button, guys. And leave a comment down below if you want to see more videos like this, where we show you some of the in-depth stuff we actually do behind the scenes. So thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.